task right now is to clean out my makeup drawer. It's a mess. It, believe it or not, does have little storage dividers in the bottom of the drawer. But the drawer is so full and overrun, you can't even see the containers anymore. I don't go through my makeup very often, and I tend to use the same things over and over and over again. So I'm sure there's stuff in here that's expired, stuff that just isn't my color and I never got rid of it, things like that. But the aggressive spring cleaning is continuing. And the way I think I'm going to do this, because I don't really want to get rid of any makeup, is I have this extra storage container um, just sitting around in the house and I thought I would pull out all the makeup that I use all the time, like my go-tos, my favorites, everything that I think I'm going to use in the span of a week or two and put it in here. I'm going to put this in my office because I'm actually setting up a little get ready with me station at one of the desks so that I can easily film like getting ready reels. And I'm gonna use that makeup in there. So I'm gonna use all the things that I reach for over and over again in there. And I'm gonna leave all the makeup that I'm not sure about in this drawer. So what I'm thinking is I pull out all of the stuff I know I use all the time and I put it in this. And I put it in my office and I start doing my makeup in my office. If I ever need anything out of this drawer, then I can come grab it. And once I've used it, it goes in the acrylic container in the office. And then I figure at the end of a month or so, I'll have a good idea of the things I just don't care to reach for. Like not just my everyday makeup, but things I literally just don't reach for. And then I'll know that everything left over in here is completely superfluous and I can get rid of it. So I hope that made sense. This is the drawer in question. Yikes. There are multiple acrylic storage containers in here and you can't even see them because there's just so much stuff. It used to be that palettes, bronzers, and blush were on this side, lip products were here, skin products there, and then like eyebrow and mascara and stuff were there, and my brushes, but honestly everything is just kind of a mess now, so the entire drawer needs a one's over. But yeah, this is my whole makeup collection, and I just, I don't need all this stuff. I tend to use the same things over and over again. When I do introduce products into my routine, it happens kind of slowly. I have my favorites, I know what I like, I don't need 10 nude lip liners, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna get to work on this. Oh, I do have a piece of news that I can share. If you watched one of my vlogs recently, I think it was the chatty vlog, I told you guys about my health insurance thing. Basically, my health insurance company randomly canceled my coverage out of absolutely nowhere, and they said it was because I didn't pay my premium on time, but I knew that wasn't true because I had a letter that stated the due date that I needed to make a payment by, and they canceled it before the due date. And I told you guys that I had called them and I'd called the Virginia Marketplace and I did all these things. I'm obviously self-employed so I have to buy my own health insurance. Called everyone I could call and no, no answers. No one could help me, right? And I think, I don't remember when I told you guys that. It was like a month ago that I filmed that. Randomly, I have an update. Randomly, I get this call from my health insurance company. And they say, is this Mary Skinner? And I say, yes. And they're like, we're just calling because we see that you are one of the customers that had coverage terminated accidentally when we switched online portals. So the healthcare company had transitioned between online systems and apparently a bunch of customers just had their coverage terminated when that happened. And apparently I was one of them. So they called me and they said, we're so sorry, your coverage was accidentally terminated when we transitioned between systems, we're so sorry, would you like to just um, renew, or not renew, but like reinstate your former plan with no lapses in coverage? And I said, yes. So I'm relieved that that happened. I was so, 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 so anxious and stressed about it for weeks. I obviously like, I can't be without health insurance. And I was so anxious and I was also upset because they were trying to tell me it was my fault. Like they were saying, oh, well, you didn't pay on time. And I'm like, well, I know that's not true. Like I felt like I was being gaslit by my health insurance company and by the Virginia marketplace. And I knew it wasn't true. So it just felt very vindicating to have them call me and be like, oh yeah, that was our bad. We changed online portals and some clients got cut. Health insurance in America is a joke. But I'm glad that they caught it and they called me and I have health insurance again. Just wanted to update you guys. I'm officially insured again. Yay. While I'm talking to you, I did sob this morning from stress. So I feel like my eyes look puffy. Um, I cried all morning from stress. Just like things are so hectic right now with everything and you know, you know, you know. But I will say overall, I have a good feeling about this week. We're going to Scotland at the end of the week um, to sort some things pre-move and we were able to time the visit to 
match up with a friend's engagement party. I did fake tan though, so everything in the world feels a little brighter because of that. God, I just can't get this to look good right now. Whatever, I'm staying home. I'm just gonna get to sorting. I'm listening to an audiobook right now. I'm a little dehydrated, but I did make an icy, icy cold water. Back on the spring cleaning. Okay, slight change in plan. I cleaned out my collection and then put everything that I wanted to keep in these drawers. I know it's not organized super well or like lined up super well, but everything that I wanna keep is just in here. So I need to wash these containers because they have like just bits of makeup on them. This is what's left in here for the time being. These are products that I do use but didn't fit up in the container. So I'm just gonna like See how often I reach for them, brushes I need to wash, and then I got pretty much everything else out of here. Sorry, this is like dirty, but I feel like that's just what makeup storage looks like sometimes. And now this whole container can go in my office and I can use it as part of my getting ready reels. And now I have another drawer to use, but I don't really have anything to put in it, so I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't really have a plan. I don't have a plan at all. I'm just making this up as I go along. But anyway, this is a bit random, but I wanted to show you guys. So Matt and I's anniversary is coming up and I wanted to get him something, but we're not really into big gifts at the moment because of everything going on. So in lieu of a big gift, I thought it would be cool to make a photo book of some of our travels and stuff together. So I did. I made one of our NC500 trip. It took me like four hours to put it together, but I'm really in love with the way it turned out and I've already given it to him. Our anniversary isn't for a while, but I just couldn't help myself. I was so excited when it came and it looked so good. So yeah, I just thought this was a cool idea because it's like a little scrapbook. Photo quality turned out amazing and you can add writing and things and I just thought how cool would it be to make one of these books for all of our big adventures together and then we could have a bookcase in our future home filled with, you know, scrapbooks of all of our adventures. I already gave it to him and he loved it. The brand is Mixbook if you guys are looking for one. I just looked up like um, vacation photo book. But yeah, I used Mixbook. I really like it and he was so excited. I wish I'd filmed him opening it because he really liked it. And I wanna make them for all of our big trips that we've had and are yet to have. Are you a moody boy? Are you moody? Is daddy making your dinner? Are you making his dinner, daddy? What are we doing for dinner tonight? That well, is the million dollar question. Because to be honest, I just yeah. I just can't handle another disappointment today. <laughs> the Skinner Gordon household is really having a day today. A day today. Somebody was the source of a surprise vet bill. Oh, he's fine. He is fine, but we have a little complication now. Um, so we're meant to be going to Scotland on Wednesday. In 48 hours, we're meant to be flying to Scotland to sort some things and <laughs> pre-move and to like get some things that have to be done, done. And we were gonna board Fergus for the first time and somebody can't go anymore. So he's had like a little cough for two days and we have no idea where he got a cough because he hasn't been around other dogs in two and a half weeks because he's been healing like the hip thing that I told you guys about before my Instagram story, it happened again so the vet was again like, you just need to let him rest. Literally the vet saying, you're a, he's a big goofy dog and he plays out. too hard. He plays too hard and he roughhouses himself and he needs enforced rest periods so that he doesn't like hurt his still developing growing limbs and stuff. Yeah. Anyway. He hasn't been around other dogs in two weeks, so where did he get a little cough? We don't know, but we obviously like can't board him if he has a cough. So now we're trying to figure out when in the next 48 hours we can take the six hour round trip journey to take him to my parents' house. 
who have offered to let him stay. Oh boy. Which we're very thankful yes. for because yeah. the tickets for this trip, like the plane tickets for this trip, because we booked it so last minute. It's like the most last minute trip you can imagine, but certain things just have to be done. So the um, tickets are shitty anyway, and they're non-refundable. So it's good that my parents can take him because otherwise we just wouldn't, you know, what, what, do, we, what do we do? Swim. Like, what do we do? Stick him in our suitcase and take him with us. <laughs> um, but yeah, now we have to figure out when in the next 48 hours can we make the six hour journey to take Fergus to my parents' house. Are we doing the full leg? They offered to meet us in Tappahannock, but I feel like we're already imposing so last minute, so I feel like we should drive him the whole way. Oh, what else happened today? Oh, a trip that we were meant to go on for our anniversary, oh, yeah. which is coming up, unexpectedly got canceled. The thing that we were meant to go do can't be done anymore. So what else happened today? That wasn't it, there was something else as well. No, there is something else. There was something else. I sobbed this morning, just full on sobbed. So we're just having a day over here. Things have not been going according to plan at all which Hopefully makes me i mean the only thing else that could go wrong is that i just finished up quite a bit of work the podcast episode for next week is like two hours long um with a therapist and i've been reviewing it but i stopped in the middle because it's seven what should we do for dinner i just it's been a day with allison this is my toxic trait and matt knows this about me the second a day stops going my way any inclination that I have to cook, which I already don't like to cook, but any desire I may have had to cook, gone. <laughs> Out the window. I mean, I'm not against it. <laughs> you know where it actually would be? Where? It'd be that Kava place. Kava? That we went to that last time. No, it's Kava in Boston. That's oh, actually, true. should we get Kava? That's the only thing I would. I, done, oh. sold. Yep. <laughs> he kind of just sits there and makes that growl sound there. Always doing all, all, all lot, no? Good boy. Oh, you think you're so big and strong, don't you? Oh, you are big and strong. I ordered the kava. I'm really excited, and I figured, okay, it's gonna take 30 minutes to get here. I think it's getting here around eight. Might as well just keep working on this podcast. So I use a podcast editing service most weeks, and they like refine the audio. What is that? Oh, my makeup brushes. That's the thing I made today. <laughs> they refine and mix the audio and then they do like a rough cut. So getting rid of long gaps of silence in the recording or, or something like that. And then I go back in every week and I refine the edit. And that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm 26 minutes in to one hour and 51 minutes. And I'm kind of nervous about posting a podcast episode that long just because I don't know, like, does anybody want to listen to a two hour podcast episode? But our conversation was really good. There weren't really any moments that I felt like could be cut. I just thought it was all good. Because I've recorded via a video call with Dr. Reap, I do have video for this one. I'd have a separate channel for the Prologues podcast that I used to upload video episodes to and I need to, I need to video every week. I know I need to. It's like one of the things on my to-do list for this year that like, if I'm serious about the podcast, which I am, I actually have to video but I do have video for this one. Hopefully I'll be able to get it to upload. That's the thing about a two hour video. I'm like, will I, do I even have enough power to get to upload that? Um, it takes forever to upload like a 40 minute video. So we'll see. And how can I help you find that? You know, your therapist is a resource. And I think the more direct conversations you can have about what you need and what you want and what you expect, the you need and what you want and what you expect usually matt and i eat dinner together and watch a show or something but oh i am eating in bed tonight i'm gonna pull that blanket up god this light does not make it look good but i feel like kava is one of those things where you forget how good it is and then you have it and you realize how amazing it is so anyway good morning do you guys like this setup i'm sitting at my desk in my office I'm gonna do my makeup here for the first time to see if I like the lighting and everything before I move into using this as a get ready station for like Instagram reels and stuff. I got this mirror to keep on the desk to assist and then I also got like a special um, desk sized tripod for my phone. But I thought I would just get ready with you guys here to test it out. I feel like it's a very cloudy day so I've adjusted the white balance on the camera so I don't look fully gray. If you can hear that, Fergus, Fergus. Chew this. 
Fergus likes chewing on the legs of my desk chair when I'm in here as an act of protest, I'm assuming. Thought I would just get like run through my getting ready routine with you guys anyway. Ooh, I thought this was dry shampoo and it's not. I grabbed leave-in conditioner. Matthew quickly ran to Target this morning to grab an extra bag of dog food because we were able to arrange with my parents when we are taking him. We're taking him down there this afternoon. So this is the dry shampoo I wanted to try. Salt Air sent me a PR package that had a bunch of like hair products. This is a body mist, but this is a leave-in conditioner and this is a dry shampoo. And they are in the Santal Bloom scent. And the body spray smells good, so I thought I would try the dry shampoo. I do like um, Salt Air shower products, so I've never tried these. Dry shampoos I use are Bondi Boost, or living proof, but I'm actually out of everything right now. So I'm gonna try this. Hopefully this works. I also wanna try the day dry shampoo that just came out. We'll let that do its thing. I always leave dry shampoo in for as long as I can before I have to brush it out. Usually I like to leave it in overnight, but I forgot that I had this dry shampoo to test out, so I just didn't use anything last night. But yeah, I prefer to leave dry shampoo in overnight. I feel like the longer you leave dry shampoo in, the better it works and the more it actually cleans your hair as opposed to just like soaking up oil and dirt with powder. So yeah, we're taking Fergus down this afternoon and mom and dad are meeting us in Tappahannock. So we only have to drive like a four hour round trip instead of six. I've already prepped my skin. I'm gonna go in with my sunscreen. My favorite sunscreen is Paula's Choice Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid SPF. 50. What are you eating? There's nothing in here to eat. What is it? Drop it. So yeah, I have really sensitive skin and I have to use mineral sunscreens. And this one works really well and doesn't leave a white path. Blends in completely clear. Looks very like hydrated on the skin. Paula's Choice is just good. I feel like I'm starting to notice fine lines in my face. I am officially like, I'm not in my early 20s anymore. I'm in my mid latter half of my 20s and I'm noticing lines around my nasal, my, what are these called? Nasolabial folds. I've been looking up facial massages that can help reduce the appearance of nasolabial folds. So I wanna get into facial massage and see it. What are you eating? How are you finding these things? Like I cleared this room. I did a sweep of this room before we came in and sat down here to make sure there was nothing in here to get into and he's found things. You are so stinky. At this point, I'd rather you chew my desk chair than eat random things. So anyway, yeah, you can see the sunscreen goes in. Totally clear. Do a little Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter. I wanna try the e.l.f. one because I've heard it's a pretty good match. Of course, I did just clean out my makeup, um, my makeup container, so kinda feel like I shouldn't buy more makeup right now. This is the Merit Beauty Bronze Balm in shade Sen. This is a really sheer bronzer formula and I love like balm bronzers. The Pixi one is a good one. I used that a ton last year, but like balm formulas just allow you to get like a sheer buildable color, which I think is really, really pretty. I always find that I like my makeup better when I do less of it, like when I do thin layers and like single layer makeup, I just feel like I like the overall result more and it lasts a lot longer. What are you eating? I might have to get him a bone or something. Um, and it just lasts a lot longer as well. So I don't really do foundation. I do the, the flawless filter, which provides like a little bit of color in the glow, but it doesn't offer coverage. And then I just go straight in with like bronzer and blush. And then I do concealer on top only where I need it. And obviously I'm, you know, showing you all of this right now. So then I go in with a liquid or cream blush. I found this one in my collection yesterday. I forgot about it. It's the She Glam Love Cake blush. So I wanted to try this one out because I just forgot I had it. Ooh, yes, I remember liking this so much. I always do my forehead and my nose. People tell me it makes me look sunburned. That's the point. It's blending out really light or like really sheer might add to it. I'm gonna add to it. It's a very wet formula. Like this is definitely a liquid, not a cream or anything. But yeah, and when I do my um, bronzer and blush, I'm not super precise with it. Then you go back in with concealer 
and things just end up like fixing themselves. <laughs> the worst makeup advice ever. Okay, then I'm gonna do concealer. What do I wanna do? Good boy, yes, good boy. <gasps> You're such a good boy. What do I wanna do? I have fake tanned, as I'm sure you can tell, and I've contoured my face, so I feel like I'm gonna do this one from Kosas because it'll be the best match. This is in shade 3.2. I believe the 0.2 means it's all of undertone because I think all the products I have from Kosas have like a 0.2 on them. You're such a good boy. I'm just, I'm just keeping an eye on you. I'm just checking. This Hourglass angled brush is one of my favorite brushes for blending out concealer. And... This helps clean up the edges of the bronzer and blush in case I was a little messy with it or heavy handed. I tend to be heavy handed with blush and less is more. And I feel like this is a lesson I learned time and time again. I love full glam looks on other people, um, but I, I just feel for me, I don't end up loving it on myself. I just don't end up loving it. I, I like sheer buildable layers and like sometimes a lot of layers like I don't think I wear a small amount of makeup I think I wear like a decent amount of makeup but just the overall effect that I go for um tends to be like a kind of buildable look yeah I think I'm gonna have to do a powder blush on top of this or like some other kind of blush it's not blushing the blush isn't blushing so then this is a tip that I swear by after I do all of these products, I go in straight with setting spray. Let that completely dry down. Like I want my face to be fully dry. And then after the setting spray is dry, I'll go in with my powder. And putting the products in that order helps my makeup last so much longer. This is the Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Cake Loose Powder. I have found myself being a little dissatisfied with it recently, and I don't know why. I think it's great for under the eyes, but I think it should only be under the eyes. Like, I don't know, I'm just not loving it on my face lately, but I'm probably gonna use it up before I get another face powder. And I do like the brightening effect under my eyes. I love a bright under eye. I don't know why I'm unhappy with it. I'm not sure, like on my face at least. It's not the color. You would think it's because it's literally a pink powder. It's not. I just, I'm not sure. I'm not loving the way it's laying on my skin. And, it's just, but it's also tough because it's the winter time. Like we're just now coming out of the winter time and my skin always is weird in the winter because it's so dry. So I also think maybe I just need to give it a couple of months as I keep like finishing it out. Maybe I won't repurchase it, but maybe I'm like, my dissatisfaction will go away when the weather gets a little warmer. My skin, like I might not like the summer and I might not like sweating. I will say my skin thrives in the summer because it's like the one time where it feels truly like plump and juicy. <laughs> now I'll go in with any powder products that I might want to do. I also rediscovered, while cleaning out my makeup yesterday, the Dior 001 Pink Blush which was like my everything last year when I had my super blonde balayage. You know I love Hourglass Sublime Flush, but this like bright, super cool toned pink was a huge favorite of mine. I'm so glad I rediscovered it, especially now that I'm lightening my hair again. Another tip that I learned off of Instagram that I really love is doing blush before bronzer if you have a tendency to over bronze and end up like a little orange because if you do blush before bronzer, you end up using less. So I've been doing that lately. I'm going in with a really light layer, kind of using the powder bronzer and blush to set the cream products because I didn't put my powder over those. But you have to go light or else it will end up patchy looking. So I'm just kind of tapping rather than swirling. I do think I'm really liking this desk setup um, just because one, it's nice to sit while doing my makeup because I stand in my bathroom and it's really nice to have all this natural light. So I think I'm loving this. But then I go in with my trusty NYX brow glue. Genuinely have been using this for years. I don't even know how many times I've repurchased it at this point. It's so sticky. I back comb my eyebrows. If you've been here for a little bit, you know the drill. My eyebrow routine is pretty consistent. I back comb my eyebrows and 
then brush them into place. But this brow glue is so, so sticky and it, it just glues them down. The name says it all. If you have a problem with the brow glue leaving like little bits of residue in your eyebrows, what I do is just take my finger, stamp them down, and that gets rid of any residue that might be on them. Then while this is kind of setting and marinating, if I was gonna do eyeshadow, I would do it now. I'm not. If I was doing my makeup for something, I would do a very light wash of brown eyeshadow over my lid and then a dark brown or black powder winged liner, maybe a half lash, but that's not super necessary today. So I'm just gonna go lash primer. You guys know I don't branch out a ton with lash primer and you guys know that I believe drugstore mascaras are every bit as good. If not exactly the same as drugstore. I'm just gonna go in. I always use primer on my lashes. I started doing this in I think early 2020 because I got eyelash extensions for the first time and I went to just this random place in the Spotsylvania mall and it, they weren't great. Well, I, I don't know if the extensions were bad or if I just didn't fully understand what it would feel like to have them, but I hated them and it triggered some kind of anxious impulse in me and I ended up pulling them all out the same night. I felt them on my eyes. I could see them. Like, you know when you wear like fake eyelashes, you can kind of see them when you blink. I could see them, it freaked me out. I don't know, I literally had like an anxiety attack about it and I ended up ripping all of them out. But it took all of my natural eyelashes with it when I ripped them out. And then I just had genuinely no eyelashes. And I used eyelash serums to grow my eyelashes back out. But when they started growing in, they were crazy sparse and thin. So that's when I started using eyelash primer to thicken them up before I used mascara and now I'm just a complete convert like when I try to use mascara without eyelash primer now I feel like I don't have it I feel like I don't have any eyelashes but you have to let eyelash primer um he's moved this hasn't he this is another old faith this is the Anastasia Pow Pow Brow Powder Duo in granite, and I use the lighter side, as you can see, very well loved. Again, I've been doing this for years. Then I just go in, I fill them with powder, and then with the next brow pen in black, which again, I'm kind of, I'm gonna skip through this because I feel like I, this is the same thing that it's been for years, and you probably don't care to see it. Although if you're new, you might care to see it. I have noticed some new people joining the group lately. I think like because I've been making a really big effort to get a vlog up consistently, the only thing YouTube rewards is consistency. It seems like you guys really, really like long, long vlogs, uh, which obviously take a very long time to film and edit, but they are like infinitely more successful or more popular than short vlogs. So I try to make my vlogs as long as I can now, ideally, like never shorter than 30 minutes is my goal, but like ideally trying to get into that mid 40 minute or higher mark. And to be honest, like I, I think I struggled on YouTube for a long time because I wasn't watching YouTube myself. And so when people would request like longer vlogs, I don't think I like realized how important it was because I wasn't watching other people's long vlogs myself. Like I wasn't getting it. I don't think it was really sinking in for me. But I've been getting into YouTube as a viewer for the first time in a long time. Like I was a really avid YouTube watcher in my teens, but then I just kind of fell off for a long time and I didn't have favorite YouTubers for a really long time. But I have enjoyed a lot of different YouTubers lately and I found myself really looking forward to when they would upload long vlogs and now I get it. Now I totally get it. Because at first I was like, but like who, like nobody wants to watch me prattle on for 45 minutes. Like who wants to watch me do mundane things around my house or, you know. And I just like wasn't, I wasn't seeing the appeal because I'm like, my life is boring, you know. Oh, he's in here. Oh, jeez, sorry. Oh my gosh, he cracked his head against a door earlier. You can come in. Thank you, boy. Sorry about that. He cracked his head against the door earlier because... He ran into the bedroom and he grabbed a sock and I started chasing him, but he was like doing it so I would chase him because he yeah. had that really playful like, yeah. and in his haste to run away so I would chase him, he turned and he slammed his head into the door. 
he doesn't know the size of himself. He seems to be fine, but like this is why he keeps getting hurt. He does things like this. I think we don't have to leave until right before one. I also have a meeting at one, but I'm gonna take it in the car search with Taylor. So I'll probably right. ask her if we can just do it on FaceTime. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, 12.30 then. Okay. So anyway, yeah, I was just thinking to myself like, why would anybody want to watch me do just like mundane stuff for 45 minutes? Yeah, I just didn't get it. But then I started getting into other people's YouTube channels and I am like, you know what? I'm looking forward to watching them do mundane shit around their house for 45 minutes. Especially, that's what I was doing last night. Um, I've been really into Lydia Millen's vlogs. She uploads like hour long vlogs twice a week. The dedication. Anyway, so back to where, I'll get to that. To what I was saying, now I get it and now I'm like really making an effort to make my vlogs as long as possible. Finish my eyebrows, now I do mascara. And I'm just using L'Oreal Lash Paradise mascara. I buy them in the duo pack. I'm an into Lydia Millen's vlogs. One, because she uploads so consistently and two, I followed her on Instagram for quite a while. I feel like she's a really OG blogger um, based in the UK. I feel like she's been around for so long. Followed her for a long time just because, you know, I'm not buying any of the clothes that she's recommending. She's like a luxury creator. But it's that aspirational content, you know, it's like living vicariously through the creator. So I've been following her for such a long time, I didn't even realize she had a YouTube channel. She has like a million people on her YouTube channel. Then I started watching her vlogs and realized how funny she was. And then I realized how gorgeous her home was. And she lives in this like gorgeous um, country home in England. And she has like a huge garden and chickens and she gar like she gardens and all these things. And that's, as you guys know, literally the life that I want for myself. Every day I'm on rightmove.co.uk looking at like gorgeous homes in Scotland in the middle of nowhere because I cannot wait to get to that point in my life where I, I've got the chickens, I've got the gardens. I look out my window and I don't see anybody. I'm looking out my window right now and I see like literally a hundred different buildings and I'm so grateful for this apartment. I'm so grateful for how good this area has been to us, but I'm a country girl and at heart and I'm like ready. Part of me is struggling a little bit with the knowledge that that like escape from the city is still kind of a long ways off because we're obviously going to be living in Edinburgh proper for a while when we move to Scotland because we got to save up for a house and and I think it'll be good. I mean Edinburgh is such, it's just, it truly is like a magical city and I think I will really enjoy my time there but I don't know, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Maybe I have to remind myself like I'm 25 and I have time to do all these things that I really wanna do and I'm not behind. I feel like this itch to like hurry up, this itch to just like, I wanna get out of the city so bad and I just like, I want it to happen. But I don't know, the longer that we spend saving for a home, the closer that we can get to like what my dream is, you know? So I know that it'll be worth it, but yeah, I watch her vlogs and just like dream about hopefully one day when that type of country life will be mine again. It's funny, like growing up in my hometown, uh, I hated not being near anything. Like I hated the fact that you had to drive an hour to go to Target. I hated the fact that we were in the middle of nowhere and now it's like the only thing that I want. I love visiting my parents so much because it's truly the only thing I want. Finished all that, last step is lips. My everyday real routine is really simple. I just go in with a nude. It's almost always, like for my everyday lip, it's almost always Nude Truffle by NYX. As you can tell, I love NYX makeup. Um, or Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. I have multiple of each of these because I throw them in purses. I have like, I just love them so much. I take them with me all the time. I'm doing Nude Truffle today. I sharpened all of my lip pencils yesterday when I was going through my makeup, so they're nice and sharp. I overline a little bit. It's been almost a year since my last round of lip filler, and I'm thinking I've got an appointment to redo my Botox at the middle of March. I've got more movement in my forehead than I have had in years, which is fine. I actually don't mind the movement at all, but one thing Dysport does to your forehead is it smooths the texture so much and like it makes the skin on your forehead or wherever you get it like so smooth. Even if it didn't have the effect of like softening the muscles, I would still get it genuinely because I love the effect of the, of the tox on my skin. And I'm considering getting just like a tiny little bit of lip filler when I go 
It's been almost a year since my last round. I've had it twice. I don't get it as much for the plumping effects, but you probably won't be able to tell because it's one of those things where probably no one notices, but I notice on myself. This side of my top lip is smaller than this side, and so I get it mainly this side of my lip to like even it out, and then just a little all over for plumpness. And I'm noticing that that side of my lip is like, yeah, smaller again. I'm gonna ask my injector, see what she thinks, because I'm really scared of migration and I don't wanna overdo it or, you know, you always want to make sure that what you're doing is proportional to your face. And that's why it's so important to find an injector that like cares more about your face than they care about just like filling you. So yeah, I just do the lip liner. Usually I would just do like either a pinky gloss. Here are some pinky glosses that I love. It's two Summer Fridays, NYX, Fenty Fussy. Or I'll just do a lip balm and that's what I'm gonna do today. And that's it, that's my face. I don't know, I'm gonna ask what she thinks because if she's like, mm, I don't think it'll look good on your face or you know, maybe we should dissolve a tiny bit and then fill again, I'm obviously gonna listen to her. So, let's see how this dry shampoo blends. The nice thing about having the balayage is that if um, dry shampoo does lighten my roots just a tiny bit, I actually don't mind because I like have the lightened sections, but it's actually blending in pretty well. Again, if this was, like if I had left it on overnight, it would already be totally clear by morning. If a dry shampoo was really stubborn, I would just like blow dry my roots, but I don't think I need to do that. I think it's actually pretty good. I'm gonna add a little hair oil in my ends though, just cause I'm roughing my hair up right now. Let me know other YouTubers who are posting really long vlogs who maybe have like, you know, country homes, maybe they're gardeners, something like that, because that's what I'm really loving to watch. Please let me know. I'm trying to follow and find as many Scottish creators as I can because I wanna make friends when I move and I don't really know what the best way to go about making friends in your 20s is because where are you supposed to meet people? Like, I don't go out a ton. I also feel like going out is not like a great setup for meeting people, so I don't know where to meet people. Like, the gym? Should I start taking classes? Like, when I move, should I like, enroll in some community classes or something. I don't know, where am I meant to meet girls? <laughs> so my hope is that if I can like find some other content creators, at least then we, we know we have something in common so I can like slide in their DMs. I've already slid in a couple of people's DMs and I have some girls I'm really excited to meet, so some, two. But two is better than nothing. I really like being friends with other creators because you have a shared experience. Um, but at the same time, I really value my friendships with people who are not creators because I think like if you're only friends with other creators, I think you can lose your head a little bit. And like my friendships with people who are not creators are very grounding for me. And I think every creator needs that. So I like and appreciate both, you know? I didn't realize that like maybe my toner was fading and I was looking a little warm until I posted a February favorites reel, like just talking to the camera on Instagram and my hairdresser sent the video to me and she was like, let's get you in for a toner in the next couple of weeks. I was like, okay, yes ma'am. We're on a quick family walk to go to the best coffee house in Arlington to get the best chai and the best cold brew. Fergus is on his new leash because he's chewed through two in a week. Anybody else's goldens do this where they just sometimes refuse to walk? So I thought my drink looked a little odd when I went to go pick it up. I was like, looks like, it doesn't look like a chai latte, but I double checked. I was like, is this for Mary? And they said, yes. I should have tried it at the coffee shop. It is in fact a latte and not a chai latte. It's the second time this has happened and I didn't realize till I got home. I just need to start checking it while I'm there, but I'm still gonna drink it because I paid $4 for it. But I can also already feel my heart rate start to increase. I keep thinking to myself, if I drink small amounts of caffeine regularly, my body will adjust and it won't give me such bad anxiety. And that just doesn't appear to be the case. So, probably a bad idea to drink this before getting in the car. But right now, I filmed an aura ring review for Instagram. Right now, I'm just trying to get a couple things done before we have to hop in the car. I'm probably just gonna end up taking my laptop in the car because I have a bunch of editing I gotta do. Still working my way through that episode um and then just yeah a bunch of editing also a bunch of stuff to do for the visa don't want to bore you guys with repetitive updates like that um but we are trying to submit my visa application really soon after we get home from scotland this time you can't travel back and forth um in and out of the country while your visa is pending obviously so we're waiting to submit until after we get back from this 
that I'm hopefully going to submit right away. Then I have to do bio, um, biometric appointments. And then, uh, and then we'll see. Matt and I were also talking last night and we decided his moving date's still a bit up in the air because we're obviously hoping he gets a job quickly. Um, he's been applying loads, but job hunting just takes time. But we think he's probably going to move first and then Fergus is going to move and then our stuff is going to move and I am going to move last and I might end up either staying, well I can't stay here after the stuff moves, maybe with my parents for a, a bit, but we think that order, like him first, settling in the apartment, getting everything ready, maybe picking up some furniture, then Fergus moving so he can adjust and so he's not here while I'm packing up this entire apartment because that would be stressful for him. And then me being here to facilitate the moving company, getting our stuff and shipping it out and then me moving last. And we really feel like this is the best way to do it. I'm just not looking forward to it. Um, one, because I don't want to be by myself here and don't want to be long distance for a bit. And then two, I'm not looking forward to packing up this whole apartment by myself, but my mom will definitely come. My mom and dad will come help me and I'm sure my friends will help me and I won't be alone. So I got a support system, you know. I'm submitting letters of support from friends and family to the folder where we're like keeping all the visa documents. You have to get letters of support from people in your life attesting to the fact that you're in a real marriage, et cetera, et cetera. And it's funny, we got my parents to write some. And my dad's is so brief. It's like two paragraphs to the point, very succinct. It ends with two sentences are about how excited he is to visit us once we move. And in contrast, my mom's is very long, literally starts with, I'm Mary's mother. She was born after 50 hours of labor on July 24th, 1998. And then it goes on from there. Like she's written a whole, a whole saga here and it just makes me laugh, the difference. You know, they may be having a time to do this before. So Scammers, computers, you just heard one. I help but start to brainstorm ideas on how you could have yeah, playing video games, I gotcha. Yeah. You're gonna have so much fun. With Grammy. Address. Good boy. We're gonna get a little lunch at the KFC Taco Bell combo. Nothing, and I mean nothing, says small town America more than the KFC Taco Bell combo. And a super Walmart. <laughs> and a super Walmart right super there. Oh, I'm excited as well. Could I please get one spicy chicken sandwich? Could I also please get three spicy potato soft tacos? I gotcha. And one cheesy bean and rice burrito. Okay, no problem. And I'll throw them in the bag for you. Thank you. All right. Anything else for you today, sir? That's all. Thank you. Oh, baby. This smells good. I don't know if I've ever had the KFC spicy chicken sandwich. So I'm going to give a little review. Matt's favorite is the Popeyes one. I like the Chick-fil-A one a little more. Mmm. I want to say those French fries are pretty unreal. French fries are good. Very nice, thick pickle. It's got nice spice in it. It's like actually spicy. In the breading. Probably and then also in the it. sauce. Yeah, both. Because normally it is just the sauce, mm -hmm. I feel like. Well, KFC is known for its herbs and spices. I mean, it's the kernel. I gotta finish editing next week's podcast on the way back. Dude, I've got some. Oh my god. Finished listening to the podcast. Matt loves podcasts about internet scams, like scammers and how people catch scammers. Well, Why is that interesting to you, by the way? Are you worried you'll fall for one one day? No, I just, it's just amazing some of the ways these high level scammers come up with, you know, ways to get your money. Hearing the sum of money that some of these scammers are able to get away with is incredible like um, in a bad way right in like a how are how are so many people falling for this mm. because it's like you're not even talking like millions like you're, you're sometimes talking billions That's of dollars crazy. total darknet well, diaries darknet diaries is the podcast i don't know if any of you guys remember when taco bell briefly took the spicy potato soft shell taco off the cravings menu i think it was like for a full year they didn't have it that was devastating to me that happened while i was in college and these were like a dollar and so when i needed a little treat 
I was heading to Taco Bell. I know there's sexier items on the Taco Bell menu, but this is my favorite. Matt said something ridiculous the other day. Matt said that everything at Taco Bell tastes the same, and he thinks that if he were to blindfold me and feed me bites of different Taco Bell items, I wouldn't be able to identify them. And yep. we actually need to do that maybe on camera because you're a fool. A fool. I know my Taco Bell items. What's your money when your mouth is? How confident are you, Mary? I'm real confident. Okay, let's see. How confident are you? Hello, you guys. We just got back. Such a long journey. And because my parents met us, it ended up being two hours shorter, like total, than it would have been. So very thankful they did. But we've been in the car for almost five hours today. Um, and obviously tomorrow's our big travel day. So definitely, definitely feeling that a little bit. But my mom is already sending videos of Fergus like running around the woods. It's so cute. I managed to finish the podcast episode as we were pulling into the parking garage. It is an hour and 48 minutes long and 14 seconds. But it is done. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that exported and scheduled. I am so glad that that is done. Definitely a big weight off my shoulders that that is all taken care of. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and start editing this vlog because I don't wanna take my big laptop with me on this trip. So I need to get everything done before tomorrow. So there we go. Love that intro music. It feels so weird that Fergus is not in the house. Um, I just don't even know what to do with myself when he's not here. It feels like the house is so empty without him. And we've had him for six months now, and yet it feels like a lifetime. Like I don't even know what to do when he's not here. <laughs> we are packing we have to leave in two hours for the airport and I'm just I haven't really made a list this time because again every this is just very last minute I'm trying to pull some things together we're going to the witchery one night and I figure this dress is perfect for the witchery this is the dress I'm gonna wear to the engagement party it's a cocktail dress code and I just think this dress is gonna be gorgeous and perfect I've got this cute little skirt and vest outfit with my brown jacket for a walking around moment. I've got a workout set in case we do anything active while we're there. I just don't know. And then I just have some extra tops because there is, you know, there's some evenings that are unaccounted for. <laughs> so I just don't really know what to bring. Like we're meeting up with a bunch of his friends, but we're also going there to get some things done. So for just walking around during the day, running the errands, I don't really feel pressure to have like a fit. I'm just taking jeans and, you know, long sleeve tops some jackets. But I'm like, okay, well I should bring a sweater and maybe some other nice tops for dinner purposes. I don't know. Right? I just don't know. We know what we're doing every single day, but we don't know what we're doing every single evening. So I'm just throwing some things together. And we have to leave the airport in two hours. I've got some K18 in my hair. I freshened up my fake tan contour this morning. I also changed the focus settings on the camera and I'm really hoping that fixes the crazy autofocus issues that I've had recently. I hope, I don't know, we'll see. So Matt and I were originally gonna just share his checked bag and that's his stuff. Maybe I'll be able to fit it all in here. It's just that I also don't want the bag to be overweight. It's never the clothes. It's always the shoes, products, and hair tools that end up getting me. That's why I have a hard time packing light. It's not that the clothes take up all the space, it's that my, I, <laughs> Why are you laughing? Yeah, it's that all of the, the products and things take up weight. So I, our tickets don't come with carry-ons, which I didn't know at the time of booking. I knew they were non-refundable. And we're in like the very back of the plane, like the most basic economy tickets you can get. I knew they were non-refundable. I knew about the placement, but I didn't realize they didn't come with a carry-on and am not loving that realization. Especially because we want to bring mom and dad back something nice 
to thank them for taking Fergus so last minute. So, I mean, if you're offering me your suitcase, I'll take it. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying you can take my suitcase and I'll take a smaller, I'll Aww. take a smaller bag. That's very nice of you, thank you. Okay, crisis averted. I feel like this is not a crazy amount of clothes for five days considering there is a party that we're going to. I don't know, is this a lot of clothes for five days? <laughs> my favorite purchases ever. As someone who loves to take pictures and loves to document memories, I got a square instant camera, so the photos it prints are not the skinny Instax ones. They're square, and then I also got a square photo printer, and it hooks up to your phone via Bluetooth, and then it prints out any pictures you want. And I have so much film, because we're going to this engagement party, and I just feel like it'd be so cool to take pictures of all the friends and family the whole night and then be able to gift our friends who are getting married the photos. I'm out of breath because I'm like I'm like running to pack right now. But I'm really excited about it because I just feel like that's something fun and special. I'm not gonna carry that with me on the flight because I've heard that going through TSA ruins film. And I don't know if that would apply to instant film, but I just don't want to risk it. I think, am I, am I done? You think I'm going to regret only bringing one coat, like that brown one. Can you check the weather quickly? It's chilly. It's not going to rain. It's just going to be windy and overcast. How chilly is chilly? Like, 60s. Um, That's no big deal. Yeah, low 60s, probably. I think I might... Oh, actually, no, it's a bit chillier. What is it? 50s. It's funny, when Matt and I were going to bed last night, we were like, let's get up early, go to the gym, I'll bring Matt as a guest to my gym, and we'll get a good workout in, and we'll do sauna, cold plunge, the massage chairs, like just overdose on wellness before the travel, and we so didn't do that. We so slept in, because there was no puppy there to need us to get up early, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. We have to leave for the airport in about an hour, and I wanna quickly get this vlog finished. I actually do have space. So I'm hopeful that this will not be overweight. I'm feeling tentatively optimistic. Thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see you next week. I will talk to you very, very soon.